Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at standard deviation and variance. Standard deviation with the symbol sigma is a measure of dispersion. Here we have a set of data and can see that it's all grouped together in the middle, whereas this data set here is more spread out. We can compare these using standard deviation. Here we have a low standard deviation in red and a high standard deviation in green. The uh, data set in green has a high amount of dispersion. It is very spread out, whereas the red data set with a lower standard deviation is less spread out. This is how you measure spread using st statistics. We can also talk about variance, and variance is very similar to standard deviation. It's also a measure of dispersion, and the only difference is it's standard deviation squared. So, Variance is given by this formula here, where the symbol for variance is sigma squared, n is the number of uh, values in the data set, x bar, that little x with a bar across it, is the mean of the x values, and then the sum, just means just sum over all, x minus the mean squared. Okay, so essentially what we do is we subtract the mean from all the x values, we then square that for every x value, and then we add them all together. Then we would divide by n, and we have the variance. Okay, I will show you this in the next example, step by step. It might look a bit overwhelming, but bear with me. Now, if you understood how to do that, to find the standard deviation, there's one more step, and that is to square root the answer. Okay, are you ready? Let's have a look at an example. So, find the variance and standard deviation of this data set 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 15. Well, the first thing we're going to do is find the mean by adding them all together and dividing by the number of numbers. And we get 36 divided by 6, which is 6. The mean x bar is 6. The symbol we use for the mean is x bar. Remember that. We now set up a table like this, where we have one column for x, another column for x minus the mean, and then a third column for x minus the mean squared. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is subtract the mean from all the x values. So the first x value is 3, we subtract 6. The last uh, x value is 15, we subtract 6. We take the x value, we subtract the mean. Then we simplify it, and we get this. And now we're going to square all those values. So minus 3 squared, minus 3 squared, minus 2 squared, minus 1 squared, 0 squared, 9 squared, etc. And we get this here. Now we're going to add all of them together. So the sum of all x minus the mean squared is 9 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1 plus 0 plus 81, which is 104. Okay. We are really close now. So to work out the variance, we have to do the sum of all x minus the mean squared divided by the number of numbers. We worked out the top of that, the numerator, which was 104, the sum of all those, which is 104, and the number of values in our data set is 6. There are 6 numbers in our data set. 104 divided by 6 is 17.3 recurring. That's the variance. We've worked it out. Not so bad. If you wanted the standard deviation, we just square root that, and the square root of 17.3 recurring is 4.163. Okay, let's just go over that one more time. So what we did, first we calculated the mean, then we subtracted the mean from each value of x, and we wrote this in a table so it's really easy to see. We then squared each value of x minus the mean. Step four, we summed all the squares and divided by n. This gave us the variance. And finally, to find the standard deviation, we just square rooted the variance, and we're done, finished. Okay? Now, part B in this question, it says, it is decided that 15 is an outlier, and probably due to an error in gathering the data. Recalculate the standard deviation without including number 15. Okay, so we're going to do this again for the data set 3, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and we're going to ignore the 15. 
But this time we'll do it in a calculator. And so we'll go to the statistics menu. And then we're going to start entering our data 3, 3, 4, 5, and 6, each time pressing E, X, E, uh, 2. And that's short for execute. Just means equals. I'm using the CG50 here, my favorite graphing calculator. Then when I've finished, I'm going to go to the settings. Uh, so I'm going to go to calc and then settings. I'm just going to check the settings here. The first two uh, rows are set to list one and one. I'm going to go exit and then choose one there by clicking F1. And that's it. That gives me the standard deviation there, 1.166 which is a standard deviation. There are plenty of other of statistic measures there, but that's the one we're interested in, the standard deviation. That is how you use a scientific calculator or your graphing calculator to find the standard deviation. Now, what's really interesting here is that we have the first data set, including the 15, which had a big standard deviation of 4.16. Whereas our new standard deviation is only 1.166. It's gone down a lot. And that's because 15 was an outlier. It was an extreme piece of data that was a long way from the rest. And so by getting rid of the outlier, the standard deviation has gone down, and so the dispersion has gone down. Uh, and if you do look at these two data sets, you do see that dispersion of the first data set was a lot more spread out, whereas the new standard deviation, the new dispersion, was a lot less. And so it does work. It's really interesting to see uh, that standard deviation in practice. Okay, you might want to rewatch today's video a few times so you can really get your head around the process. So you might want to rewatch or rewind and try this yourself. When you're rewatching, maybe pause the video and see if you can do some steps yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Check out advancedmaths.com for more useful revision resources. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.